today's video is actually your idea and it is an amazing idea but I wanted to give you full credit because I didn't come up with this uh, really awesome video idea. You guys asked to see my spooky mug collection so that's what we're doing today. We're going to be talking about the most spooky mugs and I'm just gonna chill out today. So hopefully you guys are in the chill kind of mood and we can just like talk about spooky mugs together today. I don't know. I um, Intros are kind of awkward, I'm not gonna lie. Anyways, let's get into this spooky mug collection because I'm super excited to show you. Ooh, already off to a really bad start, clearly. First up in my uh, spooky mug collection is, this might be my favorite mug of all time, by the way. Uh, it is this orange speckled mug with this witch on a broom with a cat flying over a moon or in front of the moon, which you already know that if you watch my Halloween decor haul, I have a serious, love for all things uh, like the classic witch on the broom or a witch silhouette. It is like my jam. It is my favorite thing like to decorate with. It's my favorite thing to just have out all year round. I am a sucker for a classic witch. Um, also, it says 1692 Witch City, Salem, Massachusetts, and it says it on there because there's a little story behind this mug. The first time my husband and I went to Salem during Halloween, it was actually on Halloween, uh, we got this mug. So it is actually a souvenir from a little gift shop in Salem, Massachusetts. But back to the story, the first time we went to Salem on Halloween, it was during the week and it was super cold and raining like drizzle it was more drizzly which kind of added to the whole atmosphere the spooky if you've never been to salem during halloween uh, or during october i think they do it all throughout october on the weekends and then on halloween so they have a bunch of tours you can do they also have some haunted houses and the haunted houses have like fog machines in front of them so the fog kind of drifts around uh down the street they also have a fair that's kind of in the middle of everything that has all these bright lights and like games and like little rides and stuff which i thought was really interesting because all these different colors it's all colorful and everything else is kind of dark and eerie it is a super cool kind of contrast if you get a chance to go to salem uh, during october uh definitely check it out anyways i got this mug the first time we went to salem on halloween the other mug that i got from there which i'll show you here in a bit i'll wait a little bit i'll show you some of the other mugs i'll tell you the part two story the second round but this may be one of my favorite mugs because of the story behind it because of the experience and it's just eerie cold chilly it was misty it was just ugh, the whole experience was amazing uh, love salem and loved that halloween time that experience part two to that story is to come moving on all right so since i just mentioned a speckled mug i'll mention my other speckled mug uh this one right here is a kind of country style speckled mug it's more of a an off-white like a beigey white and it has witch hats all over it and on the inside of the mug which you probably won't be able to see there is also a witch hat which i love about this mug and the inside is purple the handle is purple so there's all these witchy vibes whatever okay got this one from home goods i think last year it was on my halloween decor haul and i mentioned this and i think i mentioned maybe i didn't but i was thinking it if i didn't mention it uh, this isn't necessarily my style. I don't know what drew me to this mug, but it is one of my favorites. Uh, what the reason it's not really my style is it's kind of got that country off-white vibe and my house is very stark white and grays and very cool tone. If you know me, I'm totally cool tone till death. I love the country style in other people's homes. I just don't prefer it in my home. So when I got this, I was like, this isn't really my style, but I love the witchy vibes. And that's kind of the truth. I love the witchy hats on this mug. I like that the mug, the way it's shaped, kind of curves up, like kind of, you know, in a little bit. So your coffee doesn't get as cold in my experience because there's not as much room up here. It's not wide open to let all that cold air in, especially in the fall and winter. So I love this one. It keeps my coffee nice and warm in the morning. So I love this. And I also just love the witch hats. And every time I finish a cup of coffee and there's a witch hat in there, I feel like I accomplished something. I'm like, I did it. Okay, next up in my spooky mug collection is this guy right here. Uh, this one is probably the most 
photographed on Instagram, I would say. For some reason, every time I drink from this mug, I want to take a picture on Instagram. No, no, this one must be my most photogenic mug. I don't know. Uh, my husband and I actually saw this one at, oh, I believe this is from Home Goods. I want to say it is, like 99.9% .9 sure it was Home Goods. Anyways, we saw this mug and it has the skeleton dude and his little, uh, what are you, uh, top hat and then this Victorian looking skeleton woman and their skeleton dog. And we thought for sure this was us, although we have two skeleton dogs, although they're not actually skeletons, but you know what I mean. We have two dogs, so that would have been the preference, but beggars can't be choosers. So we still really liked this mug because it reminded us of our spooky little family. But yeah, there's here's the Victorian skeleton family and the guy's top hat. I love it. I just love this, the skeleton vibes and clearly feeling it. Apparently. All right, so next up is a mug I got this year. Did I put this in my Halloween decor haul? I'm not sure. Did I forget? I'm not, I think I did, but I'm not positive. This is the first mug I got this year from Home Goods. Um, most of these mugs are from Home Goods actually because it's my favorite place in the world to get spooky mugs. So, anyways, this spooky mug has a spider, a realistic looking spider, kind of creepy definitely spooky. Uh, and then the spider is in this web. And what I love most about this mug is not only the spider, because I think this is probably the scariest mug I have, I would say, but I love the size and the shape of this mug. First of all, there's all these indentations all over it, which is cool for texture. But what I love most about it is it fits a whole lot of coffee in it like this really holds a lot of coffee. And so if you're a big fan of creamer and milk, I don't like a ton, but I like a little bit. And for some reason with regular coffee mugs, I completely over, no wait, overestimate or underestimate? Overestimate, yep. Overestimate how much coffee I need in that, like a regular coffee mug. So I'll fill it up until there's, <laughs> I don't realize I'm filling it up that much. And then I go to fill it up with my little bit of milk and my little bit of creamer, I go both, like half and half, because I like the flavor of half almond milk and a little drop of this almond milk creamer that's pumpkin spice. I don't know, I'm a total weirdo, but I don't like only creamer. I can do only milk, but I don't like only creamer. I don't know, I'm a total weirdo like that, but I like to mix the two, so when I add a little bit of my milk and a little bit of my creamer, Somehow I'd overestimated the amount of coffee that went in the mug and it's literally filled to the brim and I have to be like slurp the top. You know what I mean? Like that's what I end up having to do. So enter this coffee mug, which is large and in charge, and I will never overestimate how much coffee I need in this because it's so big. Like I would know if I was overfilling it because I would just continuously be pouring for like five minutes straight. So bottom line, I love this mug because of the amount of activities that can happen inside of it. All right, so the next mug in my spooky mug collection is one of my, another one of my favorites for sure. It is this cauldron mug from Killstar. I love that this is an actual cauldron shape. It even has little legs on it, which just takes it over the top for me. The one thing I love more than anything is when it's been kind of like, it's on the brink of like, I need to turn on my heat and I will fill up my coffee mug with coffee and watch the cauldron steam. Like you can see it steaming, it just. Anyways, this is a newcomer to the family and uh, I have welcomed it with open arms because I just love watching the cauldron steam every morning, except not every morning because I don't like to hurt the feelings of my other mugs, but you know what I mean. All right, so I'm gonna mention these three. This is gonna get dangerous these three together because they are the same brand and they're all three from Home Goods. And I just love these spooky mugs, uh, but I love this brand of spooky mugs. I don't even really know. It says Portobello by design, but every year I look for these because they have the best design seriously on them. The first one I got is this spooky house mug with, like I said, these spooky houses all around it. And then it also has ghosts up here. Wait, where are you? Ghosts up here, bats. Uh, this house right here is my dream home, although all of them, look at this one. Oh, I guess they're all my dream home. And then here they have these little, I wanna say it's a crucifix, but I think it's actually like an old tombstone. Maybe they're crosses regardless. Then the inside says trick or treat. So this is another situation where when you finish your coffee or your tea and you look inside and you get a congratulatory message, 
That's exactly how I feel with these mugs. And every single mug has its own little saying. And these two I got this year, I'll, I'll go over them quickly because I mentioned them in my Halloween decor haul. So I've already kind of talked about them. They are the same size and everything like that. They have skeletons all around with spiders and bats. And then on the lip of this one, it's all bones. And then the inside of this one says happy haunting, which I love. The last one is this one has color to it, which I was unsure if I wanted to stay with the black and white vibe or if I did want to add some pops of color, but we've had this conversation about the bright color, like the neon, what did somebody call it? Spookadelic, I think is what somebody called it, which I'm living for. Uh, the whole bright colors with the dark kind of eerie feel vibes. I don't know, that combination, that whole thing. And this one has all these jack-o'-lanterns and candy and potion and bats. It's so... I don't know, there's something about the neon green and the neon orange, I'm feeling all the vibes, and then you've got the witch hats in there. Uh, and then the lip of this one, or the rim, whatever you wanna call it, is a, they're all little jack-o'-lanterns across. And the inside is a bright orange pumpkin that says Happy Halloween, or jack-o'-lantern, whatever. It's also a really great teacup, which it might actually be a teacup and not a coffee mug at all, and I just use it for coffee because I don't even know what to do with tea. All right, next up is this, Kind of, it's a spooky mug slash Halloween decoration in one, which takes it to a whole nother level of excitement for me. Uh, this is a, okay, it's a mummy mug, okay? But it can also be a decoration. So you can set it on your counter like this when like if let's say if you rinsed it out and you're gonna use it again tomorrow and you wanna set it on a towel or if you don't even want to use this as a mug and you just wanna use it as a decoration, it just kinda sits out on the counter or wherever you want it to sit and it could just be a mummy. I don't know who designed this, but I'm really impressed with the thought process behind it. Oh, by the way, my stepmom got me this for my birthday. Uh, so she found this at Hallmark. I believe this was from Hallmark. All right, so next up is my other Salem, Massachusetts mug. This one is black and it looks almost like a cauldron shape, not as serious as the Killstar cauldron mug, but it still looks like it has that kind of cauldron shape. Uh, and it has a little witch flying on a broom, which you know I love. And it's a Salem 1626 Massachusetts on it. This one we got the second time we went to Salem for Halloween. I think we've been like three times and then one time that was just during October. But I believe this was from like a similar little gift shop or maybe the same one, I don't know. But um, the second time we went, we thought it was gonna be like the first year. I don't know, it may have been on a weekend this time and it was beautiful out. We had just landed, like we got off the plane, checked in our hotel and then took the train. Uh, we stay in Boston. We took the train to Salem and you get on the train. Okay, look, this is the best part. The train from Boston to Salem on Halloween is the, is literally the most amazing thing you will ever encounter in your life. You get on the train and it is like Halloween town on a train. No joke. Like, you get on, I think we got on, and there were a bunch of minions. There's beauty, like Belle and the Beast over here. There's like classic monsters. You've got Frankenstein, and it is literally like you're taking the train to Halloween Town. That There's no other way to describe it. People are doing their makeup on the train and getting ready, and everyone's stoked and like excited. Like it is, the energy is amazing. So that was the positive part. We get to Salem that year, and it is a, it's like total chaos. Like tons of people, you can barely walk around, barely move around, you can't get into any of the shops where the year, I don't know if it was a year before, a couple years before that, but the first time we had gone to Salem, there was like no one there because it was cold and rainy and during the week and I don't know if people just didn't want to fuss with it or what, but we got into like every single shop, every single place to eat was open. This next time that we went, literally you could not sit down, like you could not get into any restaurant you could not get into any shop. Good luck going to the bathroom. Either way, we walked around and uh, tried to get into some of the shops and buy some things. We did get this mug, so we did kind of muscle through a couple of the shops. Uh, and then we stayed for the fireworks, which happens, I don't know if it's like 11 o'clock or what time the fireworks happen, but they do this whole fireworks display. Anyway, so then we go to get back on the train to Boston. And this is where it's an actual nightmare. Like maybe my actual nightmare was happening at that time. The train back to Boston only goes so late. 
So you have all of these people after the fireworks display, night is over, everything's shutting down. Now everyone is literally swarming to the train station. Like everyone is just like, mass amounts of people are going to the train station. There were a ton of people. It's like mass hysteria. People are worried they're not gonna get back to Boston. They're like piling on top of each other. People are passing out. I think this girl in front of us passed out. Uh, it was a total nightmare. And uh, now that I think about it, we should have just like taken a cab. I don't even know if Uber was a thing then. But for some reason we stayed in that ridiculous line. And then when you get to the train, like when the doors open and you're loading into the train, everyone is like swarming into these little tiny like train, what do you call them? Train cabs, I don't know what they are. Everyone's getting into this and there's so many people, they're pushing, they're trying to get in, they don't wanna wait until the next train or they don't wanna miss a train in general and be stuck there so they're literally like everyone's like crammed and freaking out and flailing all over and pushing and yelling and like I said passing out it was a total nightmare like I would not do that again if I had to uh that was probably the worst experience that I'd had there other than that I've never had a problem but I guess my advice is if you do go either take an uber back to Boston if you're staying in Boston or leave a little bit earlier, like leave before the fireworks display because it's just a fireworks display. Anyway, so there's good memories and some weird memories that surround this mug, uh, but overall I love it. All right, next mug is a, another home goods mug. Go figure, I'm obviously obsessed with home goods spooky mugs. I got this one the year home goods did all of the rose gold metallic dishware. That year was my favorite year ever at Home Goods for Halloween. They had black and white ceramic mugs with the rose gold. I just loved it so much. This is so my style. Anyways, this one is just a skull mug and not just any skull mug. I love whatever skull this is here. Like the shape of the skull. It's not too round. It's not too scary or friendly. I just really like the design of this skull. I know I'm being weird now. Love this. One of my favorites. I wish they would do more of this kind of style at home goods. All right, so the next mug in my spooky mug collection is this enormous skull polka dot orange, all the activities going on mug. So this is a coffee mug on a day that I am dead to the world. And it is a soup bowl on every other day. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel about this mug. So anyways, this one is from home goods as well. I really don't see mugs like this anymore. This year I didn't see anything like this because I do like a mug that will double as a soup bowl because they're super convenient in my opinion. I don't know if you guys feel the same way about it, but sometimes when you just want a little bit of soup or like leftover chili or something like that, you don't want a big bowl. You just want like something that you can easily carry. Maybe you're gonna go cozy up in front of the fire or watch a scary movie or something like that. And maybe you just want to carry the soup with you or maybe you just want to sip the soup. Either way, love the skulls, love the bright orange and the polka dots. But yeah, once again, Home Goods came through with this epic mug. Home Goods wins at everything. All right, so the last mug in my spooky mug collection is probably the cutest of the bunch, I would say. Uh, this one I got this year and I mentioned in my Halloween decor haul. It's this little jack-o'-lantern mug with a black handle and then this little ghost that's hanging over the edge. I doubt this one is uh, hand wash only. This is a hand wash only one, which is probably why I will maybe use it once a year on Halloween and that's about it because I, I literally am too lazy to hand wash anything. That's just the story of my life. But the reason I love this one so much is this one just screams Halloween to me. All the other ones are spooky, but this one, there's something about it with the little ghost and the little happy jack-o'-lantern. Something about this one screams happy Halloween. Like this is gonna be the mug that I drink out of every single Halloween morning for the rest of my life. Anyways, now that I said that, I can't wait to drink out of this on Halloween morning. And it actually works out perfectly because I have not drank out of this yet this year. So Halloween morning, this will be my mug. I'm super excited now that I'm starting traditions with my spooky mug collection. I love it. Anyways, that is it for my spooky mug collection. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up. Say hey, ghoul, hey, down in the comments because you know I love talking to you. Also, if you're still there and you haven't turned it off yet, tell me about your favorite spooky mug or if you don't have any spooky mugs, it could be any mug. Just tell me about your favorite mug, any stories behind it or what makes it special to you. Maybe you just like that it's got a spider on it. That's cool too. Or maybe somebody gave it to you or 
there's like a trip behind it. Like I didn't realize how many stories were behind these mugs. So I feel like I got a little rambly, but now I'm all excited because I want to know your stories behind your mugs and all of the good things. So, or even if you just want to tell me your favorite place to get spooky mugs, that's cool too. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.